Hey everybody, Yehuda Sunshine here for another episode of the Malware Free Broadcast. Today we're here with Odic CTO Omri Atan to talk a little bit about NetFolder for Azure as well as having a live demonstration. How are you doing, Omri? All good, all good. Um, how are you? I'm doing pretty good, doing pretty good. Very excited to check out NetFolder. Should we throw you the reins? Cool, sure. Just wanted to apologize for the mess in the back. Uh, we've been renovating my kid's room and apparently my office is now temporary storage for everything, um, more or less. The key word is temporary. The key word is temporary. temporary Just sure. the rest of your life. Sure. Um, okay, let me quickly share my screen. And let's kind of briefly go over what NetFolder for Azure does. Um, so NetFolder for Azure is a managed application. It deploys a managed resource group uh, in the customer uh, Azure account. Um, and after NetFolder is deployed, uh, two Azure functions are <clears throat> set up to monitor uh, an existing file storage, one called the push uh, function, which continuously monitors an input uh, storage for any incoming file. Um, when a new file arrives, uh, to that storage, the Azure function is triggered. Uh, the Azure uploads the file to the uh, CDR server, NetFolder Managed Resource Group. Uh, server does its magic and the file is sanitized. Uh, the entire ODIX process, um, policy, multi-AV, uh, type validation, and true CDR. And once the file is sanitized, uh, another um, Azure function uh, takes the sanitized file and downloads it to the mirror storage, um, to the output storage, basically. Um, so what we have is kind of a mechanism to transit files between two Azure storage accounts and to uh, sanitize them uh, while doing so. Um, let's see how it looks. Um, so NetFolder is available in the Azure Marketplace. Um, you can go right now, type in NetFolder uh, and find our NetFolder uh, uh, managed application offer. Uh, you can easily create and deploy it uh, in your tenant. Uh, this one is a paid offer. Uh, if you'd like to try it or do a POC, then reach out to us. We can open a private offer uh, for a limited amount of time to uh, try it out and uh, to experience the product. Um, you just select the resource group you want to deploy in, give the application a name. You can configure JIT uh, if you want to. Uh, JIT means um, just in time, uh, which gives the ODIX support teams uh, limited and controlled windows of access to the servers if you need any help upgrading, troubleshooting, or stuff like that. Um, and once you're done with it, uh, you can just uh, deploy the solution. This takes about five minutes. Um, so instead of waiting, um, I've already have uh, a deployed NetFolder uh, managed application. Uh, you can find all your managed applications in the Azure portal uh, under the managed application service. Um, so you can see that this uh, managed app has all our contact details, um, the JIT configuration that we just talked about that we'll get uh, uh, dive into in another session. And there's also the managed resource group that is deployed. Uh, again, this is all in my uh, tenant. So you can see in this tenant that we have the CDR server with a network interface. Uh, this one is with public IP, uh, same for the management server. Uh, internal networking and uh, security group. And once uh, this is deployed, um, both components are ready to use. Um, so I have my management server uh, with a default policy. Uh, default policy is set to deny all file types except uh, for these types. In this demo, I'll show an office document that I'll be bringing in. And in the CDR section, I selected to remove macros and ActiveX controls. Um, okay. And the way that this will be done, uh, as I've shown in the slide, I have my source 
a storage account with a container called files to sanitize that is currently empty. And I have a uh, Azure function that is connected uh, to that Azure storage so that every time a new file drops in uh, to that storage, it triggers the Azure function uh, that will send the file to the CDR server to be sanitized. Um, and then the file will be picked up and dropped into another uh, storage container called sanitized files. Um, and as I mentioned, my policy uh, allows only these file types and it removes macros. And for this demo, I will take a Word document, legacy Word document uh, with a macro in it, opened in a different screen. Let's do it again. Um, okay, in a different screen again. You can see the calculator popping up. Uh, this was an execution triggered uh, by the macro uh, in the same way that the calculator executable uh, was launched. Any other uh, executable can be launched, uh, probably malicious. Um, and I also added uh, another trigger to launch the macro, not just the automatic open, but also with a hidden link that can trigger the uh, executable from the document. Again, this could be something malicious. Uh, it could be a PowerShell uh, terminal that opens up and executes some commands. Um, this would be the second phase uh, after the initial access. Um, so we got our file with the macro and I will just take this file and upload it to my files to sanitize storage container. Um, let's go here. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, so my file was uploaded to the storage container. Uh, it is now in the uh, uh, um, monitored file storage, so to speak. Um, typically, we'll see this storage container being the target of uh, a website allowing uh, customers to upload documents. Um, so we'll have the documents fall into this container. Uh, it could be uh, CVs uploaded uh, through a website for job positions. Um, it could be any file share or any shared account that is used with uh, third-party vendors, suppliers, etc., that need to transfer files to a company that all these files will be dropped into the files to sanitize container. Um, once the files are dropped, the uh, the Azure function is uh, triggered. Let's see if it's already been triggered. There is some latency to the function trigger. It depends on a lot of factors in the Azure uh, backend. It can be somewhere from a few seconds to a few minutes, but you can see that um, that the function was triggered, uh, that it took um, 24 seconds all in all from the point where uh, the file was uploaded, sanitized, and downloaded uh, to the uh, sanitized file storage. And if I will refresh my sanitized file storage, then you see that I have a folder with the name of my source storage account. Uh, this is for cases where multiple storage accounts are sanitizing files into the same target file storage. Um, so I have, for example, like I mentioned, uh, one storage account from my website that will be dropping files and another storage account from a uh, file share that I have with my vendors that will be dropping here. So each one of these source uh, uh, file channels will have a different folder here. They can also have different policies set in my management server. Um, and in the files to sanitize, I now have, uh, so let's open it uh, with Word. Um, okay. So as you can see, um, no macro just popped up when I opened the document um, because the automatic unopened macro event was removed. And also the click me 
is now uh, not clickable no matter how much I try because the macro uh, in the uh, document and the VBA project was completely removed according to policy. Um, this is a way for our customers to ensure that documents coming in through certain channels uh, bear you know, the data content that they need, but not any harmful, potentially malicious uh, vectors that could be in these files. They, these are all removed from the document uh, and left out, and this sanitized copy is now uh, scanned and safe and can enter the organization. And we can also see in our management server uh, in the logs. So we get information, uh, file hash, hash after it was sanitized. And of course that the macro uh, was removed uh, from the document, getting the indication that everything is okay and users can now work with this file. Um, that's it for now. Um, we're adding more and more features um, to NetFolder for Azure. Um, we're now working on at having it as an auto scaling solution so that if there are, there's a need for, you know, burst bandwidth of files, um, then NetFolder will know how to handle it. And we're also working on out of the box integration with uh, Azure Sentinel uh, for uh, uh, syslog events, uh, reports, and so on. Um, that's it for now. So Omri, where could we find out more information about NetFolder, find out about these new product releases, and how can we contact you? So um, you can go to our website, uh, odi-x.com. There's an entire NetFolder section there um, talking about both our on-prem NetFolder, our Azure offering uh, for NetFolder, how to do a hybrid deployment of uh, NetFolder with your Azure account and uh, on-prem. Um, and also in the Azure uh, Marketplace that you can go through the Azure portal or just you know, directly to the Azure Marketplace, just type in NetFolder. Uh, you'll find it there. There's a lot of supporting documents, uh, case studies, so on. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Everybody stay safe. See you soon.